Hey, everybody. We want to welcome you here to Queen Bees. We have another Save the Music, Save the Venue summer concert series ready to go. We're so excited. Thank you so, so much for tuning in with us. We really, really appreciate you. If you're on any of our social media platforms, thank you so much for tuning in. We also have a website. It is entertalkmedia.com forward slash live dash stream, okay, forward slash live dash stream. So just go to intertalkmedia.com and go to live stream and it'll take you there. What's really great about it is you have a live chat we can go ahead and go into. There are um, buttons on there. You can get some coffee, you can get some headphones, you can enter a contest and win this microphone, which is great. And there's also a way to go onto a GoFundMe page for Queen Bees. So the reason we're even doing this, right, is save the music, save the venues, and not just save the music, but also just save the arts. So one reason that we're bringing in the voice, yes, I said the voice of our generation, is because he is here, because he is one of the best, like, poetry slam teams in the world, right, in the nation, which is really, really amazing. We are truly, truly blessed to have him. He's like the Maya Angelo, Angelo of our, our generation. So he's definitely, we are definitely glad to have him. So we want to let everybody know that Artesia is our sponsor. Artesia provided the microphone. If you apply to uh, get online, you can go ahead and apply or scroll down on the website and you can win this mic for free. It's a recording mic. And if you donate, we have some headphones for you too. And again, we have some coffee and some Queen Bee's masks as well, which is great. So I want to, uh, without further ado, I want to announce the Rudy Francisco. Welcome to Queen Bees. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show tonight. Thank you. Yo, what up, y'all? How we doing? <laughs> Yo, drop a, drop a thumbs up in the chat if you're feeling good today. Uh, so my name is Rudy Francisco. Uh, I'm going to do a, a 30 minute set for you all um, throughout this set. If something hits you, right? If you if you feel moved by something, right? I, I want you to feel free to interact with us in the chat. Um, after the 30 minute set, uh, we're actually going to do a Q&A. So if you have any questions for me, like start thinking of those. And then uh, after the 30 minutes, we'll take questions. I'll answer them. We're going to have a good time. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in, right? So um, I like to do this poem as a warm up. It's called A Few Things I Strongly Believe. If you believe in these things in the chat, you can drop a thumbs up. Here we go. A few things I strongly believe. I believe that sour apple flavored anything is delicious. I believe, I believe that orange juice tastes better with pulp. Um, I believe that Cinnabon is made by angels. Uh, I like Arizona iced tea, right? Uh, but I also believe that 24 ounces of anything for a dollar might actually be poison. Um, I believe. I believe that masculinity is a wet fish that most men are just trying to hold on to. And smiling before a fight is the quickest way to make your opponent nervous. Uh, I believe that music is easier to digest than medicine. I believe that a good song can turn any room into a church. I believe that Whitney Houston's voice is all the proof I need to know God exists. Yeah. So uh, before I before I go on, right, uh, I want to say thank you to Inner Talk Radio, and I want you. And I also want to say a huge thank you to to Queen Bees. Um, Queen Bees is a venue that has been super super. Uh, uh, it's, it's been a cornerstone of, of my growth as an artist. So uh, the fact that we can do this and you know raise money for Queen Bees, uh, you know you could buy coffee, you can buy uh, face masks, um, you can buy headphones, and if you just want to throw some money in there, like please do so because. Because uh, if it wasn't for Queen Bees, I wouldn't be where I am today. Uh, so if you appreciate what I do, you have to appreciate Queen Bees as well. So here we go. Uh, this next, this next uh, poem is called My Honest Poem, right? And not that my other poems aren't honest, right? Uh, I was challenged by a good friend of mine to write this because at the time I didn't really talk about myself very often. So, uh, so here we go. I was born on July 27th. That makes me a Leo. I don't know what that means. I'm five foot six. I weigh 175 pounds. I don't know how to swim, and I'm a sucker for a girl with a nice smile and clean sneakers. I'm still learning how to whisper. I'm often loud in places where I should be quiet. I'm often quiet in places where I should be loud. I was born feet first, and I've been backwards ever since. I like ginger ale a lot. Um, I've been told that I give really bad hugs. Uh, people say that it feels like I'm trying to escape. 
Sometimes it's because I am. Uh, secretly, I get really nervous every time someone gets close enough to hear me breathe. I have this odd fascination with things like sandcastles and ice sculptures. I assume it's because I usually find myself dedicating time to things that will only last a few moments. And that's also why I tend to fall in love with people who will never love me back. I know it sounds crazy, but it's actually much easier than it seems. And to be honest, I think it's safer that way. See, relationships, they often remind me that I'm not afraid of heights or falling, but I'm scared of what's gonna happen the moment that my body hits the ground, I'm clumsy, Yesterday, I tripped over my self-esteem, I landed on my pride, and it shattered like an iPhone with a broken face. Now, I can't even tell who's trying to give me a compliment. I've never been in the military, but I have this purple heart. I got it from beating myself up over things I can't fix. I know this sounds weird, but sometimes I wonder what my bed sheets say about me when I'm not around. I wonder what the curtains would do if they found out about all the things I've done behind their backs. I've got a hamper that's overflowing with really, really loud mistakes and a graveyard in my closet. I'm afraid that if I let you see my skeletons, you'll grind my bones into powder and get high on my fault lines. Hi, my name is Rudy. I enjoy frozen yogurt, people watching, and laughing for absolutely no reason at all. But uh, I don't allow myself to cry as often as I need to. I have solar power confidence. I have a battery operated smile. My hobbies include editing my life story, hiding behind metaphors, and trying to convince my shadow that I'm someone worth following. I don't know much, but I do know this. I know that heaven is full of music. I know that God listens to my heartbeat on his iPod. It reminds him that, uh, but we still got work to do. Thank you. So, um, so like that was one of the first poems that I really wrote about myself, uh, and it, it inspired like a whole uh, like stream of like really honest work. Um, this next poem, it's it's newer. Like, there's no video of this poem available on YouTube. So, uh, here we go. During the winter of 2015, the residents of Hampton Bay, Long Island woke up to what they say was the worst smell they had ever experienced. Mysteriously, overnight, uh, a thousand fish had died in the canal. After thorough analysis, they found that the oxygen levels in the water were too low and all the fish had drowned. Upon hearing the news, many had questions like, how does a fish drown? Don't they have gills? Don't they have a fin and a tail? They said things like, aren't they built to survive in that environment? Perhaps this is the best analogy for my depression. This angry deity, this jealous god, this thirsty shadow that rings my joy like a dish rag, turns every conversation into a conveyor belt that always begins with the phrase, you look tired today, uh, to be honest. Well, uh, uh, getting out of bed has become a magic trick and I'm probably the worst magician I know. This sadness is the only clean shirt I have left and my washing machine has been broken for months. When people ask me how I'm doing, I wanna say that my daughter's four years old and I'm still not sure if I'm a good father. I wanna say that my dad has been diagnosed with dementia. There might be a day when I walk in the room and he doesn't recognize me and I've always wanted us to start all over, but I guess you gotta be careful about what you ask for. I guess when you pray for something, you have to be a little more specific. I wanna say that crickets have been known to eat their own wings and I too have a tendency to destroy what helps me get off the ground. I really want to say that I'm kind of messed up right now but that's not a polite answer so instead I pretend it's Halloween, I jack lantern my face into something acceptable and I tell others I'm fine until it sounds like the truth but sometimes there's a help me chain to the ankle of an I'm doing okay. Sometimes I'm fine is the quickest way to say I don't want to talk about it. Sometimes all the oxygen in the room becomes water. I feel like I'm sinking to the bottom like I'm running out of air but I made a promise to myself that I won't be another drowning fish, that I will not die in this canal. I heard that if you just take a deep breath and relax, the human body will naturally float on top of the water. So I breathe and I tell myself that it's gonna be okay. I cry, but I tell myself that it's gonna be okay because I know there is a better version of me somewhere in the future. He is staring at this moment right now and he is saying, Rudy, thank you for not giving up on us. See, uh, a few days ago while I was reading, I saw a run-on sentence and I thought, you know, it could have just ended right there, but it found a reason to keep going. I smiled and I said, uh, same, thank you.
Um, yeah, uh, the next poem that I, that I want to do, uh, so um, I've been thinking a lot about, about sort of like what it means to be a man, right? Uh, me and my dad, we didn't have a good relationship growing up. And, um, you know, uh, in the past couple of years, him and I have been, you know, trying to get closer. So, like, I, I just go to his house and I ask him questions, you know. Uh, and, and it's been really, like, something that has made me think about, okay, it's like, what kind of man, like, do I want to be, you know? And I started thinking about, like, all of the, the other problematic things that I was taught as a, as a, young, as a young man. And um, it inspired this poem. It's called Rifle. And the article says, the Mexican government confiscates approximately 30,000 illegal firearms per year. When the guns are taken, they get dismantled and the metal is used to make other types of weapons that will later be utilized by their military. In 2012, Pedro Reyes, an artist from Mexico City, convinced his government to donate the guns to him. And he turned them into musical instruments. So somewhere there's a tambourine a drum set, a guitar, all made out of things that were used to take people's lives, but now they create a sound that puts life back into people's bodies, which is to say a weapon will always be a weapon, but we choose how we fight the war. And from this I learned, even the most destructive instruments can still create a melody worth dancing to, and sometimes don't we also call that a battle? I wonder how long it took to convince the first rifle that it can hold a note instead of a bullet, but still fire into a crowd and make everyone move. Uh, when I was six, I was taught how to throw a punch in the eight 80s, that was the anti-bullying movement. Uh, the first time one of my classmates took a yo mama joke a little too far, I remembered my training, so I turned his nose into a fountain, my fist five pennies, I closed my eyes, I made a wish, I came home with bloody knuckles and it was the first piece of artwork my family hung on the fridge. I remember staring at my hands, the same way you stare at a test when all your answers are correct. I didn't know what class this was, but I didn't know I was passing, and isn't that what masculinity has become? A bunch of dudes afraid of their own feelings, terrified of any emotion other than anger, constantly yelling at the shadows on the wall, but still haven't realized that we're the ones standing in front of the light. We learn how to dodge a jab. We learn how to step in before we swing. We learn the heart is the same size as the fist, but we keep forgetting they don't have the same functions. We keep telling each other to man up when we don't know what the hell that even means. We turn our boys into bayonets. We point them in the wrong direction. We pull their triggers, and then we ignore all the damage they're doing in the distance. The word repurpose, it means to take an object and give it amnesia. It means to make something forget what it's been trained to do so you can use it for a better reason. I am learning that this body is not a shotgun. I am learning that this body is not a pistol. I am learning that a man is not defined by what he can destroy. I'm learning that a person who only knows how to fight can only communicate in violence and that shouldn't be anyone's first language. I'm learning the difference between a garden and a graveyard is only what you choose to put in the ground. You see, once See, once I came across a picture of a strange looking violin. The caption said, it was made out of a rifle. I thought to myself, if someday that could be me, thank you. So, um, so I wanna get into like some, some older poems, right? Uh, sex poem that I wanna do, it's a, it's a love poem, so here we go. Uh, the beginning of it is called, because uh, it's, a, it's a medley, right? So it's a few poems put together. So the beginning of it is called, uh, to the girl who works at Starbucks down the street from my house on Delmar Heights Road, swear to God, I'm not a stalker. That's, that's the title. Uh, when I asked you for a chai latte, uh, what I meant to say was, uh, I was walking past, I saw you in the window, to be honest. I only came in here because I had to know what your voice sounded like. Instead of saying that, I got really nervous and I ordered the first thing on the menu. To be honest, I don't even know what chai is, or a latte for that matter. Uh, I imagine that when God made you, I bet he cussed for the first time. I bet he turned to an angel, gave him a high five and said, God damn, I'm good. Or like me damn, because he's, he's like God, right? Um, I spent the last five days trying to figure out how I'm gonna introduce myself to you properly. I finally figured it out. It's gonna be something like, hi. That's all I got so far. Um, but, but I do think that it's a good start. I'm gonna be honest, it's not often that I find myself eager to write about love. In fact, every time I try to write about love, my hands cramp. 
just to show me how painful love can be. Sometimes my pencils break just to prove to me that every now and then love takes a little more work than you planned. I heard that love is blind, so I write all my poems in braille. And my poems are never actually finished because true love is endless. I've always believed that love is kind of like a supermodel before she's airbrushed. It's pure and imperfect, just the way that God intended. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not much of a love poet. But if I was to wake up tomorrow morning and decide that I was gonna write about love, my first poem, it would be about you. About how I love you the same way I learned how to ride a bike. Scared, <laughs> uh, but reckless, with no training wheels or elbow pads so my scars can tell the story of how I fell for you. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not much of a love poet, but, but if I was, I'd write about how I see your face in every cloud and reflection in every window. You see, I've written a million poems hoping that somehow, maybe some way you'll jump out of the page and be closer to me. You see, I'm not much of a love poet, but, but, but if I was, I'd write about how you have the audacity to be beautiful, even on days when everything around you was ugly. I'd write about your eyelashes and how they're like violin strings that play symphonies every time you blink. If I was a love poet, I'd write about how I melt in front of you like an ice sculpture every time I hear the vibration in your voice and whenever I see your name on the caller ID, my heart plays hopscotch inside of my chest. It, it climbs onto my ribs like monkey bars, and I feel like a child all over again. I know it's going to sound weird, but sometimes I pray that God somehow turns you back into one of my ribs just so I would never have to spend an entire day without you. And I swear, I'm usually not a love poet. Uh, but if I was to wake up tomorrow morning and decide that I was going to write about love, my first poem, it would be about you. And after all of that, she was like, but how do you feel about me? And I said, uh, well, um, put it like this. Uh, I wanna be your ex-boyfriend stuntman. I wanna do everything he never had the courage to do. Like, trust you. I swear, uh, when our lips touch, I can taste the next 60 years of my life. See, last night I had a dream. In this particular dream, I died in my dreams, awoke not knowing I was still asleep and decided to walk. See, that night, I walked in my sleep. I slept in my walk. I walked backwards until I saw you for the first time, and I could barely muster the courage to introduce myself all over again. You see, I've been trying to find the right words. I've been trying to take the right steps for what seems to me like thousands of years, but something always seems to go wrong between us. We lived in Egypt. I was the Pharaoh's slave. You were his daughter. Loving you led to my death. They claimed I seduced you, and after they stole my life, I was resurrected as a mason. I made the foundation for your house. We met eyes for two seconds. You left, and I didn't see you again until I died. I came back as a caterpillar. I turned into a butterfly. I landed in the palm of your hands. You brushed me away, and the rejection killed me. When I woke, I was a kick drum. You were a snare. We were both owned by this drummer named Cozy Cole, and when he died, so did we, but I came back just to look for you. I left notes in random places hoping that you would stumble across them. I carved our names in trees and then prayed that it would jog your memory. I whispered your name in the wind hoping somehow, maybe some way my voice would reach you, but it didn't and I died. I died early. I died young with breadcrumbs in my hand just hoping that you would find me, but you never did, so they buried me. When they buried me, they put these coins over my eyes and I used them as bus fare to get back to earth just so I could look for you. That's why sometimes when we hold hands, Every so often, I hold on a little too tight, and I'm sorry. I just don't want to lose you again. My mother told me, when you find the perfect woman, you got to do whatever it takes to make sure that she wants to stay next to you. Thank you. So, um, you know, people, they always ask me like, how I got started, right? And uh, the first poem that I ever wrote uh, was this poem that I, I so I, I started really getting into poetry when I watched an episode of HBO Deaf Poetry. And um, there was a guy named Steve Coleman who wrote this poem called I Wanna Write a Poem. And I was like, that's such a cool concept. And I wrote a poem in that form, right? Um, so my first spoken word poem, here we go. If I mess it up, I'm just gonna pretend like it didn't happen and I'm gonna go on to the next poem. So here we go. I wanna write a poem but I wanted to say what you're thinking. I want to patch up the holes when your boat starts sinking. I want to write that one of a kind poem, that free your mind poem. That I like how you made that rhyme poem. That I like that last line poem. That can I hear that one more time? That is, if you don't mind, poem. I want to write that, that she's kind of fine poem. That, that I wish she was mine poem. That I want to ask her out, but I'm on my last dime poem, that, that, that what should I do, please God, give me a sign poem. I want to write that, that's so heartfelt, I think I know him poem, that this is so amazing, I got to go find all my friends so I can show them. Poem. 
I want to write about everything that I've ever wanted to be. I want to write a poem so beautiful that my parents might actually start to agree. I want to write about you, about me, about us, about everything from cars and trains to riding the bus to betrayal and trust and mistakes and heartaches. I want to talk about when I first learned to drive and I was so scared to let my foot off of the brakes. I want to talk about battles, about wars, about victories and losses, about ethnic cleansing, genocide, and lawns penetrated by burning crosses and burnt down churches. I want to write two poems for everyone who's ever been told they were worth this. Something on metaphors and similes to part oceans, rivers, and seas. I want to write love poems so sweet that the ink on the paper attracts honeybees. I want to speak the unspoken. I want to fix everything in our world that's broken. I want to be the one that performs the Heimlich maneuver as soon as our society starts choking. I want my words of inspiration to inspire somebody else to be inspirational. I want the motivation in my voice to motivate somebody else to be motivational. I want my phrases to be published, documented, and quoted. I want people to recite my work 10 years from now and have critics say, that was cool, but it wasn't nearly as good as he first wrote it. You see, I want husbands to thank my poems for the heart that they stole. And I know this is just some shameless attempt to immortalize my soul, but honestly, I don't want to be forgotten. You see, I don't need fortune. I really don't need fame. I just want people to know what I stood for and, and why I came. I refuse to die, a mere occupant of the earth, a John Doe, another faceless man out there with no name. I refuse to be just another man. I want to walk for centuries and leave my footprints in the sand for the world to see. And I want to be cremated into ashes of rhymes and poetry. I'm just feeling like one day, like one day they're going to love me. You see, I, I don't share my emotions too often. But poetry, y'all, poetry will allow me to die with my heart on my sleeve. They never saw me come in, but I'll make sure they grieve when I leave. Thank you. How are we doing out there? We still good? If you're still good in the chat, drop a thumbs up. Um, oh, I got time for about like two more poems. Uh, so I want to do this, right? So. Um, you know, I'm going to do, do scars. Uh, here we go. One. If I could, I would nail these hands to the edges of stars. I would sacrifice this body to the sky, hoping to resurrect as someone spiteful enough to not care so much about you still too. Staple me to a cross, pierce my side with a broken promise, and I will bleed all the reasons why you deserve one more chance. Three, loving you was the last thing I felt really good at. Four, you want to know how I got these scars. Well, I ripped every last piece of you out of my smile. Five, I whispered you stardust. Six, I spoke you into sunflower. Seven, I dipped my hands in forever. I touched you infinity, treated you as if you were the last molecule of oxygen inside of a gas chamber. I was, I was good to you. Eight, you want to know how I got these scars? I swallowed my pride, then it clawed its way out of my mouth. Nine, I realized that I was never really your boyfriend. I was your hype man, 10, hope your next boyfriend gets smallpox, 10, yes, I said smallpox, 10, I hate you, 10, but I miss you, 10, and I still love you, 10, I still love you, 10, I still love you, 10, it's hard for me to count when I get emotional, 10, I heard that over 90% of human interaction is nonverbal, so. Mm. 10, if I could. I would tie your arms to a daydream and then auction you off to my fondest memories. To the random dude who started dating my ex-girlfriend two days after we broke up, yes, I saw that shit on Facebook. Now, uh, when I realized that you were in a relationship with a girl that I thought I would spend the rest of my life with, I walked outside. I said to myself, there's no way Ashton Kutcher is going to catch me off guard. I waited 45 minutes, and then I realized there hadn't been a new episode of Punked in almost four years. I guess I'm the only practical joke in this entire situation. One, the first time I saw you and her in a picture, I wanted to take my entire arm, shove it inside of the computer, and snatch the happiness right off of your face, too. If I ever see you in the street, I'm probably going to punch you in the throat. Three, I apologize in advance. 
I know that it makes no sense to have this much anger toward a man that I've never met face to face, but my definition of love is being robbed in an alley eight times in a row and hoping there's something about today that makes all of this different. There is nothing logical about cutting off the most important parts of yourself and then putting them inside of hands that shake, that tremble, that crack like a sidewalk for there is nothing rational about love. Love stutters when it gets nervous. Love trips over its own shoelaces. Love is clumsy and my heart refuses to wear a helmet. Five, Cupid is fucking irresponsible and I'm tired of him using me for target practice. Six, I was told that time heals all wounds. But what exactly do you do on days when it feels like the hands on your clock have arthritis? Seven, she always wore her heart on her sleeve. So tell me, why the hell do you look so familiar? Eight, I think I've seen you somewhere in her smile. Like I've heard your voice in her laughter. I bet if we dusted her heart for fingerprints, we would only find yours. Nine, I have this envelope. It's full of all the butterflies that I felt the first time she smiled in my direction. I think most of them are still alive. I guess these belong to you too. Thank you. So um I got I got time for one more before we open it up for question and answer. Um Yo, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a, a new poem actually. Uh I got to get my phone real quick. Hold on. All right, so I'm back. All right, so um, yeah, new poem. Uh, I've, I've read this a couple times on my Instagram live, but um, yeah, it's not even memorized yet. So here we go. Like I, I've talked a, a little bit about about uh, my dad and, and my daughter, and um, yeah, this is a poem about about becoming a father um, while you still have a tumultuous relationship with your own father. So. Sorry, this is taking so long. Let me find it. Ah, here it goes. All right. My daughter is four years old. And right now, her favorite game is hide and seek. The funny part is, um, she always tells me where to hide. And she says, you go right there, I'll count, and then I'll come find you. I know. That's not how the game is played. I'm supposed to find a good spot, hide behind a door, a couch, or inside a closet. I'm supposed to make her look all around the house, try to figure out where exactly I am, but you know, I don't do any of that. Because I know what it feels like to wonder where your father is, thinking I know he has to be here somewhere. I come from a long line of boys who had to pick out their own razors and teach themselves how to shave a lineage of young men who threw footballs in the air and then watched them land on the ground. We are echoes in a cave, trying to love the frequency of our own noise but have no idea where it comes from. The first time I got an A on a test, I whispered I'm proud of you to myself just so I can hear what it would sound like in a man's voice. The first time I scored a touchdown, my football coach hugged me and I said, thanks dad, on accident. I copy pasted my father into all of my best moments then felt guilty for not appreciating him for showing up, it's fascinating how the mind will do backflips if you just give it enough time to stretch. To be honest, I thought this feeling was a pair of hand-me-down jeans, something too big for me right now, but a garment that I would grow into and then grow out of as I got older. But here I am still trying to figure out how to be a father to my daughter and myself. And this is usually the part of the poem when I say I don't know who my dad is. I tell you, I can look at five different pictures and not know which one is responsible for half of my DNA. But did you know that distance and proximity can eat at the same table? Did you know that a house can feel like an entire planet and silence can turn two rooms into countries on opposite sides of the world? 
silence is my first language and lonely is an accent that I still can't get rid of. I was told my father left for the Vietnam War, but only his body came home and I have no idea who he was before PTSD grabbed him by the happiness. My dad is one of the many rocks that America threw at another country and eventually that country decided to throw him back. But every day I saw a ghost open my front door and walk right through me without flinching and my entire childhood felt like an event with no RSVPs once. Once a friend said, at least your father didn't leave you. And I replied, at least yours only did it once. They say that an apple always falls close to the tree, but if someone picks it up, it'll go as far as they do. Luckily, it's my daughter's favorite fruit. So when she says, let's play hide and seek, I say yes. When she says, wait right there, I say yes. When she says, dad, you are so easy to find. I say, well, yeah. I'm always right here. Thank you. All right, we're gonna welcome Garth back to the yes, stage. Sir. Yes, sir, hey. man, amazing. Oh, thank you. Amazing, thank you. man, thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Mm. Rudy Francisco, y'all. Wow, right? Oh, thank <laughs> wow. You. Thank you. Uh, the passion comes across, my brother. So thank you so much, man. Yeah, thank and you. Uh, I really meant it when I said you are the voice of our generation. So yeah, I, I'm I appreciate very grateful. That. Yes, sir. Yeah. Very, very much so. Yeah, thank you. So the cats out there have um, they have a few uh, a few questions for you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I like the first question. Okay. Did you go to college and and, mm -hmm. and uh, where? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and I went, what for? Yeah. So um, I went to college uh, at Alliant International University, which is a small private school out here in San Diego in like Poway area, uh, and I studied psychology. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Great one. All right. And this I think is pretty pertinent. Um, uh -huh. do, does the current political and social climate make it easier or harder to write poems right now? Uh, it's a little bit of both, right? Um, there's so much material available because there's right. so much going on. Um, but I, I tend to be more of a, of a reflective writer, right? Okay. It's, it's hard for me to write when I'm feeling it in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but like once the moment sort of passes, I'm able to process and write about it. So, so at least like for me, like there is so much material available. There's right. so many feelings that are happening about like what's going on, not only in our, you know, in, in our political climate, you know, but also, you know, like with, you know, just interpersonally speaking, like, you know, they're like black people being, you know, killed all across the country. Yes, sir. Um, and yeah, and there's, there's, there's so much, right. Yes, uh, and, and yeah, like I tend to be more of a, of a reflective writer. Like so I want to, I want to process it all and then write. So, so it, it, it unfortunately, they're all, they're always new. There's always new material to write. Right. Um, I would love to wake up in a in a world where you know, like, I have a, I have a problem finding things to write right. about. You know, right. but unfortunately, there is a lot of material available, and I'm just sort of absorbing everything right. and you know, writing about it as I can. But even more than writing about it, like I'm looking at other tangible ways that I can do other things. I think writing is great, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, what are some other things that we can do to sort of change our climate? I think that's oh, very right. important. Yes, sir. I agree, yeah. hundred percent. Thank you for that. That's no real. problem. Um, this is kind of cool one too. Mm -hmm. What music band or artist is speaking to you right now? Right now, who have I been listening to? Um, so I've been listening to to Black's album a lot. Oh, sick. Yeah, sick, yeah. Sick. So I've been listening to that. Um, you know, like I, I still really lean on uh, Coloring Book. You know, by chance. <laughs> like I still, I still, I, I still listen to that album. Yeah. Like every other day right, you know chance. so um so Shout yeah out chance. <laughs> definitely so i've been listening to a lot of that lately um yeah good. those are those are the, the, the two that really stick out for me okay beautiful yeah. um and this is a good one too rudy mm. do you still get nervous before you go on and if so how does mm. it feel you yo i'm always nervous before i perform <laughs> right? like yo i mean before this because like you know it's it's harder without an audience right you know because usually like you feel the audience's energy and then like you you know you give the energy back you right. know but in a space like this where it's like it's just you right. um yeah i was so nervous to do this like <laughs> right. i was like pacing and like great, growing man. over my lines in right. the back hoping i don't forget you right. know um but yeah i'm always nervous uh especially like when the stakes are high um so like what i usually do is like i just try to find a corner okay. I just breathe and I'm just right. like okay it's gonna be all right yes, um, and usually a lot of the nervousness goes away once I start once I actually start right speaking. once you're on stage right yeah and uh, so that was the other question that somebody uh -huh. had was now this is your first time really doing a big big 
virtual thing, you yeah. know, 30 minutes of you, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. So how was it, man? How, how'd you oh, like it? Man, I had a great time. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Good, it was man. a bit of an adjustment, you right. know, um, because you don't get all the feedback right. that you usually get when you're performing. But right. um, I, I also think that it, it sort of opens it up to a, you know, to a whole new audience because okay. even when I tour, like I, I, I tour specific cities, yes, right? Um, and I know that there are places where they don't have access to, to a poetry scene. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, doing like the, the virtual shows has been really amazing because yes, there are people who wouldn't have access to it normally That's who right. now can, you know, can, can And your fans it. in Mumbai can, yeah. can watch, you know, Rudy Sh shout, out to, shout out to Mumbai, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. um, spoken, exactly. like, uh, y'all are, are amazing. Yes, um, yes, for sure. Okay, and then let's see if we have another one. Um, Gentle Specimen, what was your, what is your favorite poem that you've ever written and why? Um, I think the, the new poem is once it's like completely finished and, and memorized, the poem about my daughter and my father. Yeah. Um, I think once that's that's memorized and whatnot, like that'll okay. probably be my favorite. That was beautiful, man. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Cause thank you are you. right here, my brother. Oh, thank yes, you. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. And uh, when is the moment you most feel alive? Like mm -hmm. what, and what does that show you? Yeah, yeah. So the moments where I feel most alive is really being on stage. Right. You know, I feel like I am, like my, especially like when, like when, when there's an audience and I'm able to like banter mm -hmm. a little bit more, like I feel like I'm at my most authentic self, right. you know, when I'm, you know, on stage. Yes, sir. Know, so, so I yeah. believe that. That's definitely yeah. believable. Um, let's see, we got, uh, okay, Rudy, mm -hmm. what do you miss most about your early days as a poet? Too teasy. Uh, so, um, my, my, my early days as a poet, I miss just writing and not like looking at it like, okay, like this has to be great, you right. know? Um, right. Like very early on, I was just writing poems, right, you know? Right, right. Some of them were good, some of them were awful, you know? And I was just like, right. I, I wrote mostly for myself, right? I doubt um, they were awful, my brother. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, <laughs> when I read them by myself, I get embarrassed. Right, okay, you know what I mean? That's, okay, okay, okay. that's how bad they okay. were. But, um, but yeah, I miss just like, just like just writing and yeah, not right. having that that voice in the back of my head that says this has to be good, right? You know, um, yeah, the pressure of being so yeah. uh, amazing is you want to write every single poem amazing, right? Yeah, yeah you want to you want to have every poem be a masterpiece, yes, you sir. know, and it's like you that's not realistic, right. you know, and I think that that's sort of like that creates a block for me sometimes where I just I have like it. one line, and I'm just editing that one line over and over right. again because I'm so in my head about it. I know. Can you imagine with Prince after he wrote 1999? Like, what mm -hmm. do I write after that? Yeah, <laughs> you know right. It's like once when doves cry. What do I write yeah. after that? Right. Or yeah. Maya Angelou, right? Uh -huh. We talk about like her next poem, and she wrote the Pulitzer, got the Pulitzer Prize at eighteen. Right? Yeah, definitely. Which is amazing, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And so, well, where do you go from there? Yeah, you, know? you get another Pulitzer. Uh -huh. yeah, and that's a real hope for you too, my brother. Yo, for I sure, hope so. For I sure. hope so. Okay, let's see if we have another one. Um, Gentle civilian, I have been listening to you since two thousand eight. Well, mm. what's your motivation? Like, what motivates you? You know, I have some really amazing friends, you know, wow. uh, yeah, like uh, Javon Johnson, Teresa right. Siagatonu, Imani Cezanne, um, you know, Candy Coleman out in Dallas, uh, T. Miller out in Detroit, mm. uh, and like the list goes on. Like, I have such phenomenal friends who are always, you know, pushing themselves, right? So okay. whenever like, you're around people who are pushing themselves, it, right. it inspires you, yes, you sir. know? So, so I think that's my biggest source of inspiration is like, my friends are absolutely phenomenal and I'm just trying to keep up. You that's know? beautiful. Yeah. And when you sit at the winner's table, the conversation is different. Definitely. You know, I think that's uh -huh. put on Instagram 50 times a day. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah absolutely. That. But absolutely. it really is when you uh -huh. get a, you put yourself in a situation where, you know, you, you look at your five friends, right? Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. that, that is real. Yeah, that definitely, real. definitely. Um, okay, that's all I got, really. Okay. Um, anything you want to add, my friend? You know, I want to say thank you again uh, to Queen Bees. Uh, please donate to the space. Yes. Um, this space is actually where we do our, our poetry slam. Mm -hmm. And and if it wasn't for for this space, right? Like our, our poetry slam has grown so much. Uh, we went from averaging you know 40, 50 people to averaging like two to three hundred. Right. And um, you know we've been able to you know win a national title, and and we we still have so much more to do, you know. Mm -hmm. And and this space has been the space that has housed us. Like this is where we do our practices, where we do our shows. Mm -hmm. um, so. So like one of the reasons why I have such a close relationship to this space is because Alma Rodriguez has has made it uh, her her duty to you know provide a space for the arts and 
you know, of course, if you're watching, you know, you can't really see, but so we're in, in North Park, which is, right. was, was the art district of San Diego, and it's really not anymore. Now there's like boutiques and breweries everywhere. <laughs> you know, um, all of the galleries that I, you know, sort of came into this going to are now gone. Mm -hmm. You know, Queen Bees is one of the last spaces, mm -hmm. you know, for art in this particular area, and we want to save it. So even if you only have a dollar, you know, please, please right. donate because every dollar helps, and we want to keep the space open because Alma, Alma is, is such an important figure in our community and this totally. space is a cornerstone of our artistic community so if you can help us save it you know we would absolutely love that should we invite her up yeah let's do it hey come on queen b yeah welcome yeah. to queen b herself yeah hey Hey. <laughs> as much as I don't like to be behind the cameras, this is the uh, most special moment for me to be here with this uh, amazing um, poet and artist and friend. Oh, so absolutely. thank you, Rudy, for, for doing this for us. And please check out his book. It's amazing. It's going to change your life like it's changing everybody around here. But um, I want to say thank you to everybody who is uh, participating on the chat and uh, helping us continue doing this uh, virtually. I uh, want to say thank you to Florentino behind the scenes mm -hmm. here on InterTAC and uh, everybody who's um, changing the way it, things are going right now. So Queen Bees is here to stay. We're going to do everything possible to continue supporting the arts, uh, not only in North Park, but in the world. Mm -hmm. We have to make uh, the arts our number one priority because without the arts, the soul will die. So there you go. And because of that, we have uh, poets like Rudy Francisco and many others out there, and a lot of music and, and uh, art and painting and you, you name it. So that's what we're here for. And uh, uh, all your donations, they'll be well appreciated. Thank you. We had a little problems with our GoFundMe, but there's many other ways that you can donate. So please find us and support us. Thank you, Garth. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, everybody who's part of the team. God bless you. Thank yeah, you. Sure. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Rudy Francisco, Queen Bee, Alma herself. We want to say thank you so much to Artesia. Again, go online, see if you can win this free, super cool, dope microphone that's wonderful for recording. If you donate a few bucks, you can get some coffee from Queen Bee. You can get a Queen Bee mask, and you can get some cool Artesia headphones. So thank you so much for tuning in for the Save the Music, Save the Venues. Again, thank you, InterTalk. Thank you guys for tuning in. Reach into them pockets, throw a couple bucks on it so we can come back next month in August. Keep checking us out, y'all. One love. Peace. I can feel your heart.